We are spending so much time and energy being afraid that we're not fully walking into our power and our gifts. This quote from Brene Brown is one that I heard in one of her presentations on the subject of creativity and vulnerability. She says there is nothing more vulnerable than creativity, and I think she has a point. My journey over the last couple of years to develop my creativity has been, and continues to be, a journey of confronting vulnerability, of being willing to show up and be seen, and of revealing a piece of who I am through my art. Using my camera, I create art. Art that may only be for my own enjoyment, to nurture the latent creative within me. It is my hope that others will also enjoy what I create, but that's not my motivation in creating it. I didn't come to photography by a traditional route. I don't have an arts background, I don't paint or draw, and I've not been overly impressed by dusty old paintings in the art galleries I've visited. Instead, my photography interest blossomed as a result of my interest in computers. I know, way more left brain, logical, analytic, than creative and artistic. Yet I know that my creativity lurks below the surface, just waiting to be developed. I'm glad for the digital age that makes some of those dreams a reality for me. At first, when I joined the Arcanum, I assumed a more journalistic approach was what was expected, recording what I saw rather than applying a creative vision for what could be. I think this came from a preconceived notion that that was what photography was all about. With time, I've been able to let all that go in favor of making my photos over into the story I'd like to tell. The subjects that give me the most pleasure are landscapes, most often taken wherever my husband and I happen to travel. I'm looking for scenes that depict seclusion, broad open vistas, or water that would be serene if shot with a long exposure. I love using a minimalistic approach where possible. My goal is to capture quiet spaces of solitude, a stark contrast to our usually chaotic lives. Every so often a friend or family member will assume that, since they've viewed some of my work, and since I seem to always have my camera in tow, that I'd be a good candidate as the photographer for their next family portrait. I'm happy to oblige them, of course, but they have no idea the anxiety I deal with in anticipation of the event. Over time, and with experience, I'm sure I'll gain more confidence. I have dabbled in street photography, and I'll probably continue to do that when the opportunity presents itself. But it's not where my passions lie. Still, there's a curiosity in me about people and their behaviors, and I'll continue to practice the art of people watching, camera in hand. Mostly I use natural light for my subjects. A diffuser or a reflector comes in handy as well. I'd like to learn more about off-camera flash, but I'll leave that for a future endeavor. I recently purchased a full-frame mirrorless camera, and that has set me off on a whole new learning adventure learning the idiosyncrasies of both a new camera and a new collection of lenses. I said earlier that landscapes were my favorite images, but I also love flower and macro photography, subjects often found right in my own backyard, 
or at a nearby botanic garden or greenhouse. I want my photos to express beauty, peacefulness, calm, serenity. For this, I like to use negative space and simple, uncomplicated backgrounds. At other times, I might choose to fill the frame or compose a busy, chaotic scene full of color and life. It all depends what I have in front of me to work with, or maybe just what frame of mind I happen to be in. I also want my images to express joy and vibrancy and life through the use of color and contrast. I'm never shy about using color, but I have grown to love strong contrast in black and white images as well. With some photos, my workflow will be quite simple. A touch of contrast and clarity in Lightroom, almost straight out of camera. For other images, the photo is just the springboard to greater creativity, adding texture layers, painterly effects, and creating composites. I have to admit it matters little to me that my work may not be cutting edge or original. I guess I'm a firm believer that ultimately there is nothing new under the sun. I'm quite satisfied that what I produce is simply mine comes from my own vision and satisfies my craving for visual beauty and artistry. Brene Brown is also quoted as saying that unused creativity is not benign. It metastasizes. It turns into grief, rage, judgment, sorrow, and shame. When I deny my creativity, put it on a shelf, or get too busy with the stressors of life, and don't engage in any of a number of creative pursuits I've enjoyed over the years, I feel that loss, a dry barrenness. So while I cannot claim to have arrived as a creative, I am committed to the process. I do show up almost every day. My work can be found on Flickr and 500px, where I post under my own name, and also at my oft-neglected blog, Applying for an Artistic License.